What's up everyone, I am back with another lens review. Today we're gonna to be taking a look at the Viltrox 35mm 1.8 lens for the Nikon Z camera bodies. Now full disclosure, Viltrox sent me this lens for free to test out and share my opinion with you guys. So that's what we're gonna be doing today. I'm gonna to go over the pros and cons that I found out with this lens. So without further ado, let's jump into the review. When we unbox the Viltrox, we get a lens hood, a warranty card, a manual and a soft protective bag. The Viltrox also has a USB-C type connector built into the lens for firmware updates. However, they don't provide the cable needed to do this, which I thought was kind of odd, but it's not the end of the world. They're pretty easy to find. But moving on, what I love most about the 35 millimeter focal length is the ability to pull in the Milky Way core without having to do any type of panorama as we see here. Now, I haven't had a chance to do a Milky Way shot with this Viltrox 35mm lens. However, I did take a picture of the stars, which I'm going to share with you guys later when we get into the picture quality test. The build quality feels very similar to other Nikon Prime lenses, and it weighs less than a pound, coming in at 13 ounces. What's great about this lens is that it communicates with the Nikon Z camera body so it can autofocus. And just like the Nikon lenses, when you turn the camera off and turn it back on again, they'll be automatically set to infinity, which comes in really handy when doing astrophotography. The autofocus is relatively fast and silent, making it great for video as well. Just take note that there is no button on the lens itself to turn off the autofocus. So if you want to do that, you're going to have to do it from the camera body if need be. Typically, I like to put mine in manual mode when I'm doing a time lapse. So that's just something to be aware of that you're going to want to do that on the camera body since you cannot physically do it on the lens. You can manually adjust the lens aperture ring, which is silent. So it comes in real handy when you're shooting video. And when you set it to A, then you could adjust the aperture on your Z camera body instead of manually using the ring. The lens doesn't have any built-in stabilization. However, you still have your camera stabilization, which works really well. The Viltrox 35mm lens takes a 55mm filter and it has a nano coating to reduce flare. However, just be aware that this is not weather sealed. The minimum focus distance is just under 16 inches and it has a really pleasing bokeh when shooting wide open. Now as far as sharpness, I think it's okay for most people's needs as we take a closer look of the shot of my dog and we zoom in here, I think it looks pretty good. However, when you start to pixel peek this lens in comparison with a Nikon lens, that's when it paints a different story. So we're going to jump on the computer and take a closer look. Okay, so here we are in Lightroom with the Viltrox 35mm lens at f1.8. ISO 1600 and a shutter speed of 5 seconds. This was taken on the Z7 in New Jersey, so quite a bit of light pollution going on, but it allowed me to keep my shutter speed pretty uh, low as well as my ISO. So um, let's see how sharp this is when we zoom in here at 200%. Now for a prime lens, I was hoping this would be a little bit sharper. Uh, it's not terrible. We could definitely add some sharpening to it, but this is just the raw image with nothing added to it. I just adjusted the exposure a little bit because it was a little bit bright due to the light pollution. And as we drift over to the sides here, you can see it's a little bit soft and some astigmatisms going on. As we get up to the corners, let me go into 300%. Yeah, so some stretching and the stigmatism going on. Uh, I expect that to probably be a little bit worse if you're shooting around like 10 to 15 second exposures. So that's just something to keep in mind. Now this lens is around $399 and I think the Nikon is around $850. So you are saving yourself 450 bucks, but you are going to lose some quality in sharpness. Now, with that money savings, though, you could put it towards a star tracker and then stop this lens down and track your night sky. Um, and that way you get sharper stars and you also get rid of some of that vignetting when you stop down the lens. So that's always an option. And to be honest, when I shoot with a 35 millimeter lens, I like to use a star tracker anyway. Uh, even if it is a 1.8 or a 1.4, I typically like to throw that onto a star tracker. So let's see what this looks like Stop down a little bit. So our next shot right here is at F2. And we can see it sharpened up a little bit in the center. It's still quite soft here towards the sides. Um, and obviously the astigmatism still going on, but F2 isn't a huge change from F18. Let's go up to 2.8. Zoom in here. 
zoom in here. It's a little bit sharper in the center as to be expected and the sides and uh, corners should also get a little bit better. It is sharpening up but still quite a bit of uh, astigmatism still going on. So you definitely, like I said, if you get a star tracker, uh, use it around like f3.2 or f4, that would probably be the best results with this type of lens. Yeah, it's not too bad on the right corner here. But a little soft in my opinion for a prime lens. We're going to jump over to the brick wall test next. And I don't have the Nikon 35mm 1.8s lens. But I do have the Nikon 24-70 2.8s. And I'm going to set it to 35mm and take some shots with that. And compare it to this Viltrox lens. So let's jump over there next. Alright, so here we are in Photoshop and I have my Nikon 24-70 f2.8 s lens and I set this lens to 35mm at f2.8. And then on the left here we have the Viltrox and this goes down to 1.8 so we're going to start off with that and then work our way to 2.8. So let's zoom in here and you can see the Viltrox is definitely very soft compared to our Nikon 24-70 and um, I would imagine the Nikon 35 millimeter prime would uh, do a much better job than probably both these lenses wide open so that's just something to consider but you are paying the extra $450 to get that sharpness now there is another workaround that I want to tell you guys that if you want to bring some sharpness back into this image to uh, you know with that money savings that you have you could actually buy a program uh, Topaz Sharpen AI does a fantastic job sharpening images and I actually took this same shot right here at 1.8 and ran it through Topaz just to kind of see the difference so I'm going to show you guys that next so here's that same shot at 1.8 but I ran it through the Topaz now I might have did it a little too much but you can see how sharp that is that it, it, it's even sharper than 24 to 70 at 2.8. Um, now it's not perfect. There are some spots where it's still a little soft, like right around the sign here. There's a, you know, some of these bricks are soft and then they get sharp. So that's just one of the issues with Topaz Sharpen. It's, it's not perfect, but this is also a very complex shot because we have all these bricks going on. I would imagine if it was like a landscape shot, it probably wouldn't be as hard for the AI to, uh, to do that, but that's just something to keep in mind. I think it did a decent job. Uh, it looks really sharp now. Uh, it's not perfect by any means, but much better than what it was. Um, and like I said, you're saving yourself 450 bucks, and then you, with that savings, you take um, like 50, 60 bucks and buy the Topaz Sharpen AI, and uh, you can definitely increase the sharpness using this. It is an extra step, a little extra time though. That's just something to keep in mind but you have an option. So let's uh, turn this one off. And there you go, there's the original 1.8, just so you can see it one more time, versus Topaz Sharpen. So before and after. A couple spots, it didn't get quite right, but relatively decent job. So let's go to our next shot right here, which is our Viltrox at F2 compared to the Nikon. It's starting to get a little bit better, but obviously still softer than the Nikon at 2.8. Moving forward, we are at 2.2. And we're almost there as far as sharpness. I could definitely, like I said, run this through uh, Topaz or maybe even sharpen it in Lightroom um, and get it on par with the Nikon 24-70, but uh, it's not quite there yet. Here we are at 2.5, still slightly softer than the Nikon, and jumping over to 2.8. 2.8 versus 2.8, Nikon still has the advantage. It's just a superior lens, and like I said, this is the 24 to 70, so I'd imagine the 35 millimeter to be even better. Um, you know, the Viltrox is very close, and there's things we could do to get it on par with the Nikon lenses but it definitely right out of the box is not gonna be as sharp. 
So that's just something to take in consideration. And I'm gonna jump over to another test here uh, with the brick wall. So on the left here, we have the Viltrox at F4, and on the right, we have the Nikon at F4. Let's zoom in, starting in the middle again. You can see they're pretty close. I think there's a slight edge with the Nikon still. Let's zoom in a little bit more, 300%. It looks like these bricks are just a tad sharper on the Nikon side, but not too uh, not too far off from each other. Corner is pretty decent, a little bit softer than I'd like on the Viltrox, um, and it definitely softens up on the Nikon as well. So pretty comparable at F4. Let's try F8. It almost looks like the text here is slightly sharper on the Viltrox, um, but the bricks, ironically, look a little bit sharper here on the Nikon side. It's really hard to tell. I think they're pretty even with each other. And our corner-to-corner -corner sharpness gets much better on the Viltrox now, as well as my Nikon. So at f8, both lenses are performing as expected, nice and sharp um, from corner to corner. So those are the last two images I want to show you guys before I wrap this up. Obviously the Viltrox is a softer lens compared to the Nikon, and I would imagine it'd be even softer compared to the 35mm 1.8S lens by Nikon. So um, that's just something to take in consideration. Obviously we have a couple workarounds if you don't mind doing that. We have the Topaz Sharpen AI which helps quite a bit. And um, you know, if you have that money savings of 450 bucks, you could definitely take some of that and put it towards the Sharpen AI, which I think is around 50, 60 dollars for that program. But don't quote me on that; I'm not positive off the top of my head. Now, it is great to see that these lens manufacturers are creating lenses that work well with the Nikon Z camera system, and hopefully, the quality of their images will just get better over time. And I want to thank Viltrox again for sending me this lens to test out. I greatly appreciate it. And if you guys have any questions, feel free to ask or send them to Viltrox directly. Take care, guys. Thanks for watching. Have a good one. Bye bye.